start off by thanking Amanda, Haley, all the judges, and the participating universities in the 2024 ABC competition. I first want to start off with a quick safety moment. Here at Longwater Construction, we strive to maintain mental health. Remember this, if you see something, say something. Folks, my name is Charlie Rahaley and I'm the general superintendent for the duration of this project. And this here is our A-team that we'll be bringing for this project. We have our swimmer, Matthew Owings, the project manager, Will Dapp, the Aquanaut, and the bid boss, Austin Mayer, lead estimator. Thank you, Charlie. Again, my name is Matthew Owings, and I'm going to be serving as your project manager for the Fort Lauderdale Aquatic Center. Now, our sports and recreation division has earned $1.9 billion in the past 10 years. Here at Longwater, we value client services and satisfaction. That's why we are proud to report a 98% client satisfaction rate, and a which translates over to our 94% repeat client rate. Speaking of repeat client rates, we have partnered with the City of Fort Lauderdale and Councilman Hunsaker on previous projects throughout the recent years. Those projects have been completed on time and within schedule um, with 22 weeks of time savings. And thanks to our bid boss over here, we have been able to provide 6.7 million in cost savings and 9.8 million in value engineering options. So we are showing highlights of projects from the past 12 years that show past project experiences and relevancy to the Fort Lauderdale Aquatic Center. <coughs> so we are coming off fresh from the Los Olas Marina and a partnership project with the Fort city of Fort Lauderdale. Now this project shows uh, many similarities to the Fort Lauderdale Aquatic Center, such as the site condition challenges, such as the high water table and the location of the intercoastal waterway. Next, we have Ransom Everglades Aquatic Center Club. And this project was partnered with Councilman Hunsaker and includes pool specialty equipment and details that call out cast and play surge tanks. Another project with Councilman Hunsaker, Canoe Landing Center. It features a FINA compliant competition pool and another Councilman Hunsaker detail calling out for uh, Acuron, basecrete, and uh, plaster layers on the pool slab. Here, our project team is referred to in our org chart. We will have five team members who are going to be committed full time throughout the construction process. Longwater's collective success would not be possible without our trade partners, whom we have great working relationships with. Now, all of these are important aspects of the project, but how will we do it? At this time, I'm going to pass it off to our site sheriff, Charlie, and our aquanaut, Will. Take it off from here. Thank you, Matthew. Again, everyone, Charlie Rahaley, general superintendent for the duration of this project. Will Dapp, pool and concrete superintendent. Now, we've identified some key risk for this project going in that we're going to mitigate in our site utilization plan. Starting off with mobilization, we're first going to start off with establishing silt fencing and construction fencing around the job site area. Then establishing our laydown areas for equipment and storage of connexes, as well as the boat protection around the existing marina around the job. Our GC office will be in the existing Hall of Fame building. And we're also going to be taking protection measures around the engraved concrete on site. With those protection measures, we're also going to be taking tree protection measures. There'll be 89 trees to be remain and be protected, and 32 total trees to be removed. And thanks to our wonderful bid boss here, we found that 30 trees were in the schedule and 32 trees were included in the estimate. Now starting off with demolition, one of the more largest phases in this project. With demolition, we decided to start off in Demo 1A, which includes relocating the sculpture that means so much to you and so much to the swimming community. This allows us to move down the pool deck, around the pools, and working our way up to the grandstands, which allows an opening to get to the demolition of the competition and dive pools. The competition demolition will include demoing the pool walls and pool floor. 
and the dive pool demolition will include the pouring of a seal slab layer, the, drilling of, the cutting and capping of utilities, and the drilling of hydrostatic relief valves in order to reduce groundwater pressures. Now after this, we're left with two fairly large holes in the jaw from the dive pool and competition pool. So after this demolition, we would have to level the site, and then following this, we'll sheet piling for the dive pool and competition <coughs> pool. As Charlie takes the lead on the sheet piling, I'll take the lead on the dewatering. We plan on using a well point system surrounding the competition pool and dive pool surge tank in order to dewater the site. Moving on next, the mobilization of the auger rig and assembly on site. We plan to start in the dive pool and the dive tower, doing those concurrently, moving to the 12 inch auger cast piles on the deck, then moving to the competition pool, finishing with the foundation, the building foundations, the teaching pool, and, a, a, and installing the, high, the helical auger piles during that process. Now after this process, we get to the excavation of the pools, the competition and the dive pools, which is a long and tedious operation. It involves excavating the dirt in between the piles, which is slow and steady. We'll first start off with excavating the dirt in the competition pool and shipping the piles down to the correct level, grade level. In the dive pool, we expect the groundwater to be difficult to manage. We don't, we don't suspect that a dewatering well point system will be able to handle the groundwater on this site for the dive pool and that 24 plus, that approximately 24 feet of excavation. So we plan on pouring an underwater trimmy seal layer to isolate that dive pool in order to pump it out once so we can ship the piles down to grade. Following that, we will be installing pool utilities for the dive pool, then moving to our soil surcharge, putting that in place for 45 days with its necessary monitoring, as you can see here, then moving on to the rest of the pool piping of the site. While this is getting done, we'll be doing the building interior construction. Now after the surcharge is placed, we'll then be able to form and place our crane pad, which allows us to then erect the dive tower. This is another important scope, our concrete floor plan. We plan on all of these phases, and for our bigger pours, for our smaller pours, we plan on having the trucks come in through the main entrance, circle around, and exit. But for our bigger pours that require 100 plus trucks, we plan on having them we're coordinating, but having them enter it from the south of the site, going all the way around for smooth four operation. Our site two logistics, our phase two logistics, we would recommend that this, this phase would be done before the middle concrete deck is poured, so you have access to the south of site for abatement, demolition, and construction of that new building. As you can see here, we have a 27 month original duration for phase one and some of its milestones, and an additional 11 months phase two with the, their milestones as well. All this brings me to the question, how much is this going to cost? Thanks, Will. Uh, my name is Austin Mater. I'm the lead estimator on this project, and yes, I do still enjoy skiing. Uh, so our team at Longwater Construction has uh, worked diligently throughout this process um, and proposed a phase one cost of $29.8 million and a phase two cost of $37.8 million. Uh, we have included a 3.95% contractor's fee. Here we have some key metrics uh, for this work. One that I want to point out is the $7.4 million per cost per acre and the $612 cost per square foot. We have a scope breakdown for phase one, and I'll get into some safety hazards uh, requested by our safety manager. So here we have six areas of safety that we'll be looking at um, and monitoring throughout the entire course of construction, but one I want to focus on is the dive tower. So while we're constructing the dive tower, we'll make sure that all workers are tied off while working on the tower um, to mitigate that fall, to imp implement fall protection. We we'll also have fire watchers and hot water is done while those cast, precast panels are being welded together. And then there'll also be a full perimeter uh, site fence around the dive tower so that people who aren't supposed to be in there aren't in there. Here at Longwater, whether it's safety or quality, our people are our biggest assets. Here we have a story from our champion, Terrence Walker, and how he has implemented quality on all the projects he has been a part of. For this project, we'll be implementing our quality control dashboard. This will, help us to allow, this will allow us to deliver the highest quality product, uh, maintaining our bonding and grounding inspections, as well as our FINA inspections for the finals. So why Longwater? Longwater has worked with Fort Lauderdale multiple times, and we look to continue that uh, with this project at the Fort Lauderdale Aquatic Center. I thank you for this opportunity to respond to this RFP, um, and I would like to now open the floor to any questions directed to Charlie. Thank you.
mentioned. Got a question uh, on your dewatering. Uh, who, who generated your dewatering plan for you? Thank you, great question. Well, yeah, so we used our previous experience and our knowledge in this site, especially with the Las Olas Marina, to understand the site. And we understand the groundwater challenges. So looking at that, we decided to have a well point system for the competition pool, mm -hmm. to have constant dewatering, because that's a, de a shallower excavation. But for the dive pool, we understood the challenges there. And we understood that you wouldn't, maybe you wouldn't necessarily be able to use a well point system to lower the groundwater enough to have, uh, to have excavation to do your activities in that dive pool. So we proposed the idea of that Tremby seal so we can isolate it and pump it out only once so we can continue our activities. Okay, and to follow up with the well point system, where is all this water going? Yes, uh, great question. So we plan on having a filtration or a settlement tank, a mm -hmm. temporary groundwater settlement tank on the, north of, on the north site, burying a line underground so that we can pump it, monitor it, and monitor that turbidity, but pump it into the intercoastal, um, but make sure that it's clean and not polluted water. Okay, and do you have any backup plans if your pumps go down? What's, what's your contingency plan? Yeah, so we will have multiple, well, we will have multiple pumps for that dewatering system because of the size and to prevent, like, we will monitor those systems continuously along with the turbidity monitoring. We will include monitoring of those pumps, maintenance of those pumps to ensure they don't go down. 24, mon 24 hour electronic monitoring on our dashboard. Thank you. Thank you. You mentioned, you mentioned value engineering earlier on in your presentation. What specific value engineering ideas do you have for this project? Thank you, great question. Awesome. Yeah, so we have proposed uh, in our RFP um, a value engineering option to doing a stainless steel pool. Um, so this will allow, instead of doing the concrete structure of the concrete floor and the concrete walls, uh, we'll pour just a concrete slab and then we'll implement stainless steel pieces that are the exact measurement um, so we won't have to worry about any FINA compliance or any size differences with the, compared to the concrete. Um, but we, we would implement a you know, stainless steel option if, if the owner would choose. So. Have, have you guys installed a stainless steel pool before? Yeah. yeah um, one of the other pools in Miami. Are you concerned about lead times at all with, uh, with the stainless steel pre-engineered pool like that? Uh, no, we, I mean, we've worked with this contractor before, um, so we have a really good relationship, strong, strong standing relationship with them, um, so we would not be worried um, about that. So I have a question about lead times and procurement. So obviously this uh, pool dive tower project um, has a lot of electrical in it, and supply and chain issues being what they are, you know, we still have fully recovered from COVID. The switch here on this project is a really big concern of ours. And when we're actually gonna be able to get those pumps fired up, get the water moving, um, what's your plan to make sure that we can get that switch here on time? And what kind of lead times are we looking at? Great question, Will? Yeah, um, our procurement, we've paid a lot of attention to procurement for this project. We have a lot of specialty equipment, as you, as you said. Um, for switch panels and electronical electri electrical <laughs> procurement, we, um, we plan on having early sub buyout along with all of our other procurements. We have early sub buyout. As soon as we receive our documents, we talk to our trade partners. We have previously communicated them. But we talk to them. We get them on the same, we, we get on board with them. They start their buyout process. We start our, our, our procurement process. And the one thing about this project is all of the required steps that we need to take before we do get to the stages where we need this equipment, including demolition and the auger process. So that gives us a little bit of leeway there in order to procure these items that have a longer lead time. Thank you. I have a question on just communication with your neighbors. What, do you have a plan to communicate with your neighbors? You've got hotels, you've got condominiums, you've got super yachts surrounding your job site. Do you, what, what's your plan to communicate? Yes, great question. So we'll, we have a long-lasting relationship in the Fort Lauderdale area. So communication will not be a problem. Our logistics plans and utilization plans have, have shown that. But how, how are you going to communicate with them? Communication, picking up the phone and utilizing what we need to do to for, for, to organize the things that need to be done. Okay, thank you. 
Within your proposal, you guys list out a VDC coordinator. Can you talk about how you guys are going to use VDC in this project and if the owner is going to be involved in that process? Great question. Matt? I'm sorry, the question is if a VDC coordinator will be involved in the project? Yeah, how are you guys going to use VDC Absolutely. in this project and how will Absolutely. we be involved? We will definitely have a VDC coordinator um, who has built the model and who will work continuously with the owner on any kind of design changes by owner's request. The VDC will play a big role in our pre-con, but will also have durations throughout the construction phase just in case any of those changes are implemented so we can get that VDC coordinator on the model, make updates, and we'll make changes to the project as we need. Thank you. Speaking of technology, you guys seem like you're on the cutting edge of technology in your proposal. Your project management plan has what seems to be an AI dashboard that includes forecasting. Um, can you talk about your in internal control processes to you know, ensure that the information in is giving you good info out? There is a completion date that conflicts with your CPM schedule, and I just want to hear what your guys' thoughts are on how you're going to QC that information into your dashboard. Great question. Matthew? Absolutely. Great question. Thank you for that. We use our plan AI on all of our projects. We do not use it word for word. We use it as a resource. Um, we are confident in it as we do use it for many of our projects and it has given us good, great outputs um, who, that, and it's given great projections of what we've seen to come in real life. But of course, there are going to be flaws in the system and we will always be working to ensure that we uh, implement our own practices and know what we know before we take action on what the plan AI is for recommend, recommending us. With the complexities of this project over the three years and two month duration, how many safety incidents do you anticipate having? Thank you, great question. Austin, would you like to? Yeah, yeah so I've been working close with our safety manager um, and of course we plan to have zero. Um, we've, long water construction has had a very good safety record um, and that's not something that we, we plan for is uh, any safety incidents, but if anything did happen, we definitely have the uh, right plan of action um, in order to respond to that incident. Thank you. Thank you. You have the owner responsible for filling the two pools, so how would you schedule with us and, and ensure that your schedule is able to be maintained by bringing us in to do that work? We would have to hire out subcontractors. What's that process look like? Yeah, so uh, the pool filling process. Um, we pay special attention to our finishes on this project, including all the stucco, all the pool plaster, every, pool, every finish that we include in this process, including the, the, the pool plaster. So the pool plastering process, we have a plan in place to ensure the cleaning of that surface and the plaster process. And after that plaster process, we plan on filling the pools right away. So we will coordinate with the city and everybody necessary to get those pools filled right after the plaster process by ensuring our progress through the schedule and our continual and um, constant communication with the city to ensure there's no gap in that process because the pools, we want to keep that plaster safe, keep that pl plaster curing correctly. Thank you. And with <clears throat> planning on filling those pools and as, as such, do you, you guys have a plan of where the water's going to be coming from or how you're going to be providing power to your site? Didn't see it in any of those diagrams for your site you great question so we have made note of temporary power in our site utilization I can get back to that at a, at a later date you, you touched on some pretty impressive past projects are there any lessons learned that you'll be bringing forward from those projects onto this one absolutely great question we have spent over 50 years in pool construction we have our superintendent of pool and concrete working on our job sites. Of course, we do excel in concrete self-perform, but we understand that pool construction is a specialty division. We know that it's very intricate, and we want to make sure that a specialty contractor is subbed out to that process to ensure that that pool is built to the standards it needs to be done. Um, but we, of course, again, we have spent many years many past projects on pool construction, and we are very confident in the way we perform and execute those projects. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, since your team has a strong relationship with the city of Fort Lauderdale, how do you guys plan on uh, supporting the boat show activities 
during that time? Absolutely, great question. We have built in the uh, event of the Hall of Fame um, International Show, the Fort Lauderdale, uh, inter excuse me, the Hall of Fame International Boat Show um, into our schedule and we will make sure to take the proper precautions necessary. We understand that there will be high levels of traffic and uh, foot traffic around our project and we will take the, uh, the proper precautions necessary and work directly with the city to ensure that we nothing's being hindered with that uh, event. I have a question unrelated to your estimate and it has no bearing on your score. Did you use chat GPT in your proposal to us? Be honest, please. Yeah, yeah so we did use chat GPT um, for some of those pool calculations um, we put in to um, get the gallon um, per gallon per flow, the flow per gallon um, for those pools. Um, and we fig figured that that was the most accurate way um, based off of our needs that we could price those pool equipment. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Quick question, on the, on the estimate, you have included a 3% owner contingency. Can you elaborate what that's for and who gets to make the decision on how it's used? Yeah, so that 3% owner contingency um, is obviously by the owner. Um, it's gonna be used for any weather delays or design changes that the owner decides to make. Um, we would like to propose a 2% uh, contractor contingency um, for our sake, just for um, any, any design changes, or there's a lot of unknown on this project. Um, so until we get out on that site, we might not recognize something. Um, so we're just going to propose that 2% contingency as well as the 3% owner contingency. Uh, we have time for one more question. Uh, so in your phasing plan of pouring decks, these are quite large pours, and being the deck as a finished product, what is your plan to ensure you're meeting whatever guidelines and finishes that are required on the job? Yeah, well, so being the concrete and pool specialist and superintendent, I have lots of experience with pours like this. And on this project specifically, as I talked about, we have different routes for bigger pours and smaller pours. And we take pride in the, the prep work that we use for the formwork, the rebar, the inspections, and all of those processes. And we are confident in our numbers there and our durations there because of that prep work and that experience we have. And those pour days, they're built in, and they're built in through past experiences. And we, um, we plan on those days being very large in some of our busiest days on site with those activities, but we are very confident in those numbers, very confident in our experience with those situations. Thank you. All right, well, thank you. Our time for questions has come to a close. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.